Hello again. Welcome to another edition of Arts and Ideas. I'm Sue Swinan. And we're close to home today in the studio of artist and educator Irina Parfanova, who uh, has been in this area for since uh, 2010, I believe. Yes, since late uh, 2010. She's uh, a teacher at the Worcester Art Museum for four or five four, years? Four years. Four years. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, she has a very interesting background, which I think you're going to enjoy hearing about. And her work is uh, something I've been watching for a number of years since she's been here. It's been on my radar. <laughs> and uh, she has exhibited quite a bit in the area. Uh, most recently in the Arts Worcester exhibition, Model Behavior. And uh, the work in that exhibition will be going to the Fitchburg Art Museum this summer. That's right. And uh, also you had a recent show at uh, the Hanover Theater in Worcester. Uh, yes, correct? I had a show, a solo show at Hanover Theater in Worcester in 2012. Uh, uh, yes. Well, I'm very happy to be here and I'm anxious to show you Irina's work. I loved that piece you had in the Model Behavior show, the drawing of the, uh, the nude. Uh, yes, uh, it, uh, actually I had a model, my daughter, who uh, volunteered to model for me. So we had several sessions with her. And uh, it, it's just a simple drawing, not much going on there. It's uh, just a nude body uh, of reclining. We'll, we'll uh -huh. can show the audience a close-up, but I, I was amazed at the nuances of tone and the beautiful treatment of the hair in particular. Did, I was wondering if you used some instrument to pick out the lights of the hair or... Uh, well, actually, you know, I didn't use much technology or instruments to pick up the light. It was just the lighting in the studio. I but worked... I mean to lift uh -huh. the, the charcoal or lift the pencil? Oh, yes, yes. I, I did use a sharp knife to subtract some of the drawing marks from the page. So, uh, and to reveal the background of the paper a little bit more. So, what you can see, like all these well, white lines there, is just the subtractive drawing. It's so, I like the paper. idea of that because a lot of people think if you do charcoal or watercolor that you're only putting on. And I like the idea that it's important also, if you're manipulating materials, to be taking away. Right. Yes. And that was just such a beautiful little touch, the way those hairs stood out in front of the darker. Yeah, I, th I think, you know, in that, in that case, you know, it was really hard to do a fine white line on top of already, like, you know, a big dark mass. And every line and every material has a little bit of a different feeling or yes. nature to it. And you can't make a dragged, dry line with a piece of chalk that looks like that little sliver of hair. Right. But the right. way you yeah. did it was just perfect. I yeah, love it, it was, it, it was uh, probably an advantageous uh, move yeah. for me just to uh, lift some of the uh, areas yes. of drawing and reveal the background. And actually, I do that quite a bit. Yeah, when I draw or paint, I sometimes scrape back to the background yes. just to show a little bit more of the... Uh, yes, beginning stage. It was also a beautiful pose. The, uh, well, the pose, that, that was something I was going for. I, I wanted to create some, uh, it, it's a reclining pose. Uh, the, the girl is in repose there. But at the same time, I wanted to create a sense of dynamism, you know, as if something is going on with the figure, as if it's lifting, maybe. It it's did being look elevated. like it was lifting. But <laughs> also, it's the unusual viewpoint. Uh, and I noticed in this one that uh, mm -hmm. you said it's fairly recent. You're still working on this, right? Uh, well, yes. It, it was this work was exhibited, but I'm still not quite happy with the bottom part. So I am yes, I will be reworking that. But yeah, that's the the viewpoint of the figures is similar to the drawing where looking you kind of down hover. On. Yes, you, you hover on top of yes. your models. You're looking down. Uh, here, the models are really really close to the. Uh, ground in the drawing, I just I let the Levitating. model kind of elevate, yes, levitate a little bit closer to you where I am. You know what's really interesting to me is how much of the figure you really employ, and 
I, I think that a lot of people don't really know the figure that well, but you are able to work on it, obviously, from your imagination even. So I think that shows a great knowledge of... Uh, now, where did you get your training for all of this classical knowledge? I attended an art school uh, in Russia, uh, and I spent five years there uh, learning the fundamentals of uh, drawing, painting, uh, design, decorative design that time, sculpture, and uh, some basic art history. Uh, the art history there was mostly about Russian uh, development, Russian tradition. And the whole school, you know, the, the visual tradition in that school was based on realist um, uh, visual tradition in Russia. As you know, it had a very strong uh, school of realism, social based realism, on social realism. Yes, yes. yes. So we uh, were taught in that tradi tradition not a lot of experimentation in the abstract art uh, there, but it gave me uh, enough uh, tools, you know, enough information to create um, illusions. You know, so I, I learned perspective, I learned a little bit of anatomy there. It's very important to have a vocabulary and be able to use uh, imagery in any way you want. So you have a wonderful foundation. So after you got your MFA at uh, Florida State, where did you go? Uh, after that, we went to California. Uh, it was in 2004. I, I was already out of the school looking for jobs uh, and, and in California I did a bunch of projects. I worked as a freelance artist, a public artist and also started to, um, as, uh, as an artist, I started to focus more on the landscapes. Uh, it was also the time when I switched from one medium to another so I started to use a little bit more of gouache. And gouache, as you know, is an opaque watercolor. So uh, unlike transparent watercolor, it has a chalk inside as a, a, f a filler. And when gouache dries, it becomes lighter in value. And uh, noticing that as it becomes lighter in value, I realized that, you know, gouache captures the specific Californian luminous atmosphere very well. It, it renders the light of California. So I started to rely on this medium a lot and started to produce It's a very high-key media because you can't really make dark, dark, darks. No, you, can't, you cannot make extreme darks unless you varnish the gouache surface. Which acts like it's wetting it. Yes, it exactly. It looks like wet hair. Yeah. Uh, so, you, so you're doing the gouache work. Were you doing that on site or were you using photographs? Uh, many of the gouache uh, landscapes that I produced then were on site works. Yes. Uh, sometimes, like you know, for bigger gouaches, like um, uh, the scene on the beach with people, people pro uh, procession, I would do sketches on the beach. Uh, I would do probably some photographs and then I will work from multiple sources to compose uh, the composition of the beach. I'm amazed at how you can organize or orchestrate large numbers of people into a painting. I think that's <clears throat> one of the hardest things to do. You know, it was pretty interesting then, and it still uh, stays as one of my artistic goals. I want to be able to produce big paintings with lots of figures, intricate, intricate compositions, which are filled with uh, some kind of meaning of filling. Yeah, uh, it, it's interesting that you use the figure in such provocative ways. You know, a lot of your figure work seems to have um, psychological or strange unexpected, unexplainable Aspects. scenes or something, yes. Yeah. But let's get back to the scenery. So mm -hmm. you were painting on site and doing sketches and... That's right, yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, because, you know, gouache is an ideal uh, medium to be, uh, to paint on site because it dries, uh, it's really easy to handle, uh, so you can transport your pieces easier then uh, after after the work is done and one of the main advantages is that it is reversible not like an acrylic where you can't wash it off it's just like watercolor in that you can wash back on it and also it has all that chalk filler that uh, Irina was mentioning so that you can put a light area over a dark area. Yeah, just because the medium is opaque. So yes. you can come back to the 
areas that you want to yes. work and just maybe uh, place another layer on top. However, in gouache, it's it's really important to keep count of the layers. You cannot place too much uh, on top of each other because of the chalk. Gouache is very fragile, so if the uh, surface, off, yes, off, yeah. if the, uh, the surface is flexible, yes, the uh, the gouache layers can crack and then start flaking. Interesting, off. interesting. Now you also became more fluid and spontaneous at that time. I think that's true. That's true. Uh, uh, maybe that was about more of the forces of nature or... Uh, forces of nature and uh, probably also the change in the lifestyle. I was engaged in all these different projects, you know, artistically, and I also started to have a family, my daughter, so I, have, I had to act faster, think faster, spend, uh, you know, maybe less time on my works. So gouache was a little bit more spontaneous, it dried fast, and, um, you know, I, I had to make my decisions fast. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that for my expressive needs, that was just the ideal medium, because it had the right intensity, consistency, and speed. Interesting. And then you came to Shrewsbury and uh, the light was different again. The light was different again, yes. Uh, as we discussed in California, the light was, uh, uh, there was a lot of diffused light. I, uh, there were not so many contrasts uh, that I could see, uh, especially at the distance in the atmosphere. Uh, uh, Massachusetts is a little bit different. We, we have lots of trees here, lots of filtered lights. So uh, the overall atmosphere is slightly darker. Uh, and for a while I was sort of like colorblind. I just couldn't think in terms of... And chrome. you were doing a lot of works in, in black and white at yes, that time Yes, and I too. started to produce... And, and interiors, I wonder why. <laughs> because <laughs> it can't be outside. But uh, I, I like the interior works. The one of the woman at the top of the steps uh, yeah, it's the, the work is called Steps, uh, and these works were slightly different from my more perceptual uh, gouaches uh, in California. I, I had to slow down my process, so I decided to concentrate on a little bit more of the existential, uh, existential side of um, you know human uh, experience. life experience. Yes, so and I started to kind of mentally come back to uh, the time of my childhood. Um, and I started to think about the idea of home, what home is. Is it like a place of origin? Is it a, a point of destination or is, is it something in between? So I started a whole series of works that were about home. So the steps with the woman uh, at the doorway is just like one of the pieces which deal with the idea of, of the home. Uh, I was also thinking about this prodigal son uh, theme that uh, it was very popular during Baroque period where, when, you know, a, a son returns back to his father. So, and I was, I, I tried to employ some of the Would that involve the piece of the little figure running? The little... Uh, uh, yes, yes. The, the, uh, uh, the whole series actually started with the little figure running away. Uh, you know, it's, it's the interior scene where uh, a little child is running toward the beam of light and kind of gets uh, fades into that that light. Well, that's what I like about it is that it, it, your your pieces have a great uh, narrative quality to them, but you're not always sure what the story is. But you look at it, you're engaged enough that you want to create. A, that's very the good. Story. That's very good to hear. Create the story. Many uh, of my pieces. Yeah, uh, they're, they're not stories, like no. clear-cut stories no. or narratives. They have a certain level of uh, narration there, so people can find a story for themselves, explain it, interpret that. I like that very much. Yeah, but I don't want to impose my story. Right, my, because then it becomes idea. more like an illustration. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. That's very interesting. So, uh, you know, you were the recipient of one of the material needs grants from Arts Worcester, I know. And what works were you doing? That was just a year ago. Uh, and you did specific works about Worcester. About right, that, as right. I understand. And actually, that, uh, the series of works that I produced for the grant uh, for Worcester Arts Organization uh, was also dealing with that idea of home. Just because well, you know, me and my family, we, we changed so many places and we tried to uh, adapt to, to places and find homes. In, in those places. I thought of Worcester as my, you know, next uh, hometown. 
So, and I focused on different scenes in Worcester and around uh, Worcester that would uh, bring parallels between my original home. I would like to show this one if we could. And uh, the Worcester. Yes, this, this um, figurative piece actually uh, features uh, the Worcester skyline. So you can see uh, Union Square, uh, Square there, the railroad, uh, and pretty much the, uh, a bit of the city. So you can get, kind of guess what, what is depicted here. And the guy is uh, in the foreground. Uh, the train station. The tra yes, I just want to make Square. sure everybody's with us. <laughs> Right. The train station and tell what yeah, he's doing. Telegram Gazette bil building uh, right here. Uh, there is a road here, which is Too sort of nice. like a symbol. <laughs> well, I think it's railroad. Uh, <laughs> but two, I think 290 is over here okay. on the bridge. Okay. So, so what is he doing? Uh, the, the guy is kind of standing. We don't know where exactly the guy is standing. Is he trying to balance? Is he, is he trying to jump? So it's just some kind of an allegorical uh, figure uh, that kind of finds his way or her way. Uh, it's in a the balancing new, act. It's a balancing <laughs> act, exactly, in the new environment. And the name of this, uh, the title of the piece is W Act, which is uh, also a play of words, uh, you know, double you, when you just, you know, you, you come to a new place and you rediscover yourself in a new picture. So you can, can you kind of handle, yourself? you recreate yourself. So it's a, it can be multiple you uh, thing. So you can, you know, it's just the process of self-discovery, mm -hmm. rediscovery. I'm going yeah. to show your self-portrait as well. Okay, let, let me probably, would you like me to... I love this piece. It's a beauty. Thank you. Thanks very much. This, this piece is one of the experimental one. Uh, first of all, I played with a different surface here. It's not canvas, it's mylar, which is a plastic smooth film. Uh, which doesn't accept paint uh, too readily. You know, uh, paint becomes too slippery. It's so smooth. It's very smooth. So you can, uh, you know, uh, spread the paint easier here, but it will not sit uh, on the uh, surface at the very beginning. So maybe after uh, applying a couple of layers, it would. But you know, if you because can see you build up a, a tooth exactly. Whereas yes. in the first coat, it slides. You, you like can on kind glass. of see the first coats. Like I, I try to deliberately leave mm -hmm. some of the exposed uh, areas uh, where the first coat revealed, and you can see how, like you know, it dripped mm -hmm. down. So and I, I, I kind of like that feeling of dripping down. So I wanted to create a kinetic landscape in and the this background. one is called on the road right it's called on the road uh, on the road yes it's me uh, as a wanderer here or prodigal son <laughs> in a way it's um, interesting how you've of searching that for myself. whole sort of longing and searching and expectation and wonderment and befuddlement it's all in your expression which i think <laughs> is very successful oh, thank you so much thanks yeah I, uh, yeah there's, there's another portrait I, I wanted to show, which I think... Which is a portrait in process. It's somehow, compositionally, it's different. It's just the front uh, of the figure. However, here, I started to play a little bit more with the colors. Uh, I was... Uh, you really are working with the warm and cool here. Warm and cool, And exactly. the daylight and the uh, uh, warm The warm artificial, artificial light, yes. So well, it's, that, it's just... That, you were saying you were more of a tonal painter. Before that, like, as you can see in, in many of my works, they are mostly tonal, except for gouache. Meaning that there's more uh, Form reliance modeling. on dark and light That's true. rather than yeah. color. Yeah. So, sh and sometimes uh, they have the, a, a darker sense because the color is not as pronounced. It's not, yeah. It's, it's very limited color, mm -hmm. uh, usually. This color. is good color. Uh, this is mostly color. Uh, you know, I was influenced by many uh, contemporary colorists in the States, and I, I just tried to experiment a little bit more with I always color. liked that Cezanne was the one who learned to model form with color yes. and not with value. Right, right. And, uh, of course, Bonnard was all color with no value. And, you know, yeah, just, and, but, and that, but this yeah. is a combination which is lovely. Uh, yeah, and it, it reveals the form, and at the same time, it reveals the, all these different uh, colors that uh, 
are present on the skin. Yeah. And also there is a symbolism uh, behind the, the light, you know, like the school, uh, you know, out of this world light and warm human light. <laughs> Something like that, you know, the light or can be also interpreted the duality in of and the changing, you know, just the same kind of ideas you were talking about in the other pieces, you know, of of uh, which is which is real or which is which is real. How do you recreate yourself in yeah. another uh, in another yeah. way? Now, is this a piece you're still? Uh, you said it's not. You're not quite sure if it's finished. Uh, no, I'm, I'm still coming back to this piece uh, uh, and kind of, you know, revisiting it and seeing what I can do here because I'm, I'm still in the process of uh, clarifying my vision, my idea in this piece. Interesting so. how that works in a painting, how it reveals what you want to say. It reveals to you what you want to say. It re yes, it's, it's a kind of a revealing process. And also, you know, sometimes like you work with all these visual elements, uh, trying to make your idea clear. I wanted to ask you about Sometimes, that. Do you uh, always do you usually start with the idea first or I, yes, I usually start with the idea first. Like a very vague, basic idea. Then I look for the imagery that might fit that idea. Mm -hmm. And I start to manipulate with them, so I, I do uh, little sketches at first. Mm -hmm. uh, then I just, you know, greet my uh, my canvas and start introducing like you know, large figures, see how they interact there, and that is that's probably the most interesting process because uh, when I see things large, I, I start editing them and refining my vague idea, like what exactly I want to say. Sometimes like, you know, that vague idea transforms into something else and I have mm -hmm. to change the exactly. direction of exactly. the painting. But it's interesting how she can use the figure in such an expressive way and how you begin to notice that everything in a painting, the shapes themselves, express the emotion. So his erect posture or her angle or the way something is diffused or the way something is exaggerated, these all contribute to what the painting begins to communicate to the viewer. Right. But mm -hmm. I, I think the other thing that's so cool is the way she'll put figures together into a composite uh, arrangement, but also uh, her figures are completely contemporary, which I like. You know, they're not trying to be girls in big hats and, oh, you know, thank you. Uh, Thanks something. So much. No, I, I try not to idealize. I want yes. to, my pictures, like even being vague and some semi uh, symbolic, you know, symbolic and still reflect a little bit of nowadays. Uh, well, times. the idea of him looking at the. Uh, his the little cell phone, uh, cell phone yes. and being so totally focused, I think, is, is uh, He's very kind interesting. kind of like, you know, uh, in, inside himself now. Yes. So, and that's some sort of like a, a, yeah. I don't know, a feeling of connection because the yes. figures are basically very close to each other and at the same time disconnect because they are in their own isolated words. worlds. I'm sorry. So these uh, are really large figures, but uh, she's done a number of things where the figures are quite small and she orchestrates large numbers of people in in uh, a, a, you know a closed space which right, i think yeah. is quite interesting you know here in this work i was again uh, going uh, uh, for the feeling you know entering a room feeling all this buzz the noise converse, distant conversations th things like that things that you cannot paint <laughs> And um, the yeah. sound of clinking glasses, the, exactly. the smell of a pipe. <laughs> right, right, something like that. So the figures here, they're like props to uh, accentuate that, you know, that audio, uh, audio feel, uh, noise mm -hmm. that you can. You know. you know, it's interesting. This media is oil, correct? This is oil. This yes. is oil on the mylar again. Right. But do you notice how the strokes in this are much more visible and uh, stand apart, whereas on the rougher surface, she's dragging the paint and rubbing it a little bit more so the tooth of the canvas 
is making the edges of the strokes much softer. Yes, it, it definitely uh, smooths the, the brush strokes, the, the rough texture. And the smooth texture is much more revealing. So it reveals a little bit more of the artistic process, how the brush stroke is placed. It shows each yeah. brush stroke more yeah. than... So it gives a little bit more of energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I like. Sh let's show them the other, that uh, road to the sky. Uh, uh, just because, again, yeah. it, it, it is a painting from a real place. Yes, it's, uh, this, this painting uh, was done uh, on location, actually, so it's a plein air piece. But on location, I had to manipulate my composition. So I raised the road, so literally, it would bring us to the sky and kind of connect these two areas, the, the earth and the, the sky. Uh, uh, so that's, that's one thing that I wanted to create. That so it's a very imaginative. <laughs> She's really employing her desire to express an idea and uh, in some ways distorting what she has seen directly in front of her to make the idea more clear. Well, that's what we do as artists, right? Exactly. We, we take the license. But I find that, uh, that uh -huh. swirl up into the uh, infinite uh, right. There is there's some, some kind of a spiral composition yes, yes. here, which kind of, you know, it, it invites the viewer inside. You know, kind of it take that role. It sucks the viewer inside. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, it's probably one of the most violent pieces. Well, it's a very powerful yeah. motion. And uh, it really does swoop you into the, uh, yeah. into the painting. Where can people see more of your work? Well, oh, right like, now, you have a website? I, uh, yes, I have a website, which is my name, www.irinaparfinova.org, O-R-G. I'm going to have a show, a solo exhibition in summer at Briarwood Gallery in Worcester. So and that's probably, uh, it, it's going to be some, like a big show. And where is that? Um, good question. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> Briarwood you know, Gallery. I, I, we, we I, will, I, I don't orient to, to a good... Uh, we'll put the address. Of, yes, it's um, really close to uh, Shrewsbury High School. So it's very okay. close to Shrewsbury. And it's uh, Briarwood Community. So basically, oh, I know where it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. I don't know what that part of the house. I just visited the gallery, liked it, and that was it. <laughs> so you so. can see her work there or go to her website and you can read her statement and all about her history and uh, you'll also be able to see your work of course at the Fitchburg Art Museum next summer in their uh, call and response show. That's about it for today. Thanks for joining us and we'll hope to see you again next time for another edition of Arts and Ideas. Mm -hmm.